welcome back everybody. This is our monthly routine that we do of keeping it real live from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm so glad you've uh, decided to join us this evening. We've got a great show lined up. Uh, actually, I had three guests scheduled uh, tonight, but one of the guests could not make it because of our famous uh, bumper to bumper traffic in Atlanta uh, caused by numerous wrecks on uh, the interstate and um, she had to travel about 45 miles and got locked up in that traffic and uh, she'll try to make it perhaps next month but the good news is I have a video that I'll be showing of Miss Danette Flint who's a comedian here shortly and you'll get to see a little bit of, of what she does and then I'll do an in-depth interview with her next month uh, anyway um, we've got uh, two guests tonight lined up uh, Mr. Uh, Neil Schulman a doctor entrepreneur uh, author uh, many many things and another uh, interviewee this is a very interesting young lady named Linda Warren who's a healer uh, not just a by touch healer but also a spiritual healer which I find very interesting so we're gonna have a good time talking to her I think that we're gonna start tonight off with a fabulously done commercial about one of our new sponsors so if you'll bear with me, watch this commercial. It's a fun place to be in Atlanta when you're here visiting, or if you just want a great night out and you're a local. Let's run the commercial, Al. Are you looking for a great night out? Are you in the Atlanta, Georgia area? Are you looking to check out some live, awesome music during the week? They have keno, poker tournaments, horseshoes, and special events. It's all at the Moon Shadow Tavern. That's at 3976 Lawrenceville Highway in Tucker, Georgia. That's the Moon Shadow Tavern. Give them a call, 770-674-2133. Check out their selection of great food, friendly service. Visit their website at msttucker.com. That's www.msttucker.com. Moon Shadow Tavern is a proud sponsor of the Chris Massey Web TV Music Show on www.americanheartsradio.com Make sure you told them that American Hearts Radio sent you. Visit their website, check out their great selection of food, appetizers, wings, burgers, sandwiches and wraps, steaks and chicken, salads and sides. Also their drink specials. Live music during the week. Check them out. Give them a call. 770-674-2133 Wow, that made me hungry. And now I want to go have a party after this show at the Moon Shadow Tavern in, uh, where was it? Lawrenceville? No, Tucker, sorry. That's the next town over. Hey, Doc Schulman is back with us. I think you all remember Doc from several shows that I've had. Nice to see you again, Doc. Nice to see you. I feel like we're getting bound at the wrist here. What are we doing? Am Checking I... your pulse. I'm alive, aren't I? Uh, well, I'll tell you. Barely? But you have to give me your insurance card. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still waiting for my Obamacare thing to come in, so oh, yeah? I'll call you when I get it. That's a dollar fifty. <laughs> I'll do two of them for two dollars. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you what happened last night. As a matter of fact, you were there. I was. Yeah, we were at the Jimmy Carter Library last night in Atlanta. I had a fabulous time. Uh, Doc Schulman was uh, signing uh, and autographing his book, Second Wind which is a major project that we're working on to try to get into a, a movie uh, venue and also uh, as a stage play. And you're the producer for the stage play. I am, I am, yeah. But last night was special because you, were, you, you had invited a, a lot of people and they all apparently showed up because it was completely filled, standing room only, and there was about 40 people out in the uh, uh, lobby that could not get into the event. And it seats about 150 people, I'm guessing, maybe, and has a stage there. Uh, it was exciting for a lot of reasons. Number one, we talked about what the Second Wind Project is all about, which is a great organization. And we also showed um, a clip from the uh, short film Second Wind. Then uh, Neil got up and talked about the book and introduced me, and I introduced our new playwright, who I have gotten that is going to turn the book into a major stage production hopefully this year. So we had a great time last night and uh, you look like you were getting writer's cramp after a while from signing so many books that you were selling. Yeah, I was. Uh, so now you're going to need carpal tunnel surgery? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Carpal tunnel. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, where were we? I don't know. Okay. Let's start over. How many people did we have at Emmanuel's Tavern? Or, what was it, Emmanuel's? Or Manuel's? Manuel's. Manuel's Tavern after the event. Oh, there must have been at least 30 years. 30 or so. Yeah, we had a great party afterwards. Yeah. Kind of a celebration. Yeah, we're trying to get the human species to celebrate seniors. That's they right. They should be on thrones at the end of church services. They've got all this stuff in their brain, and they shouldn't just be thrown away. They should be right there giving their history, their advice. They do that, you know, there are tribes that do that right. all over the world, whether it's Indian tribes, whether it's Ma Maasai tribes in Kenya. Native American tribes. Native, they, they respect seniors. Right, right. And, uh, Japanese Japanese, people, yeah, they, they have a lot of seniors in right, Japan. Right, right. So we want a movement to respect seniors and give wishes to seniors. And the co-author of the book started this great program that's in many countries yeah, around the world. Please name her. P. K. Bevel, B. E. V. I. L. L. E. And it's Second Wind Dreams. And if you go to secondwind.org, uh, five times a day, they're mm -hmm. giving out a dream. It's amazing. What would you want your dream to be? I'd like to uh, be able to fly. Really? I, I mean, own? in an airplane. Oh, I really? mean, actually pilot an airplane, yeah. Really? That's just my wish, yeah. Well, you want to do it? Sure. We'll go out to Atlanta Airport this this evening. And yeah? We'll put you on, yeah, I'll get one of the pilots to move over. Oh, okay. Are you going to fly the plane first? Uh, well, it depends on whether you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I... Anything is possible, right? Well, let's put it this way. I was a total klutz growing up. Mm -hmm. I uh, missed my mouth when I was eating. Yeah. I danced and stepped on girls' toes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've saved more lives yeah. than any doctor in the world. My gosh, that's that's commendable. It's true. Yeah. How did you do that, Doc? By not being a surgeon. That's good. If I was a surgeon, there would be a lot of more dead people. <laughs> I, have a, I have a malpractice lawyer who's a friend. He yeah. begged me to go into surgery. He said he'd split anything he made <laughs> suing me, and I'd be a billionaire within a year. <laughs> Oh, you got to tell our audience about the other, not to jump around, but to jump around and uh, change direction on a dime here. Um, the movie that you did with Michael J. Fox is called... Doc Hollywood. Doc Hollywood. That was out several years, well, actually back in the late 90s. It was 91. A, it was a monster hit. I've seen it several times. Yeah. And now we have a major announcement regarding Doc Warner Hollywood. Warner Brothers wants to make it into a Broadway musical. Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in being in that Broadway musical, uh, let's see, I can give you the name of the head person at Warner Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Just contact us here at American Hearts Radio. You can contact Neil Shulman or me, Dennis Aloya, through that uh, website. We'd be glad to help you out. And if you want to donate to, uh, you know, having the thing come true and uh, maybe being a part of it, that's possible too, right? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Secondwind.org. By the way, uh, you know, with the musical, mm -hmm. there's a big advocacy group for me singing in the musical. No, big time. No kidding. Big, oh, yeah. I didn't know you had a good voice. Well, that's the reason they're advocating. It's a bunch of ENT doctors, ear, nose, and throat. Mm -hmm. They know they've got a lot of business if I sing. <laughs> Well, look, uh, we're looking for players uh, eventually down the road. We don't necessarily want to have people that have maybe been professional actors. We'd like to have somebody that's really high quality that hasn't been discovered yet. Don't you think for the second win play? Oh, it would be yeah. Fun to take new people, give them an opportunity to shine, you know, in front of an audience. And you have such a great sense of humor. You think I so? Th yeah, I think. I know you're going to be working with the playwright. Yeah, yeah I will. And it... Yeah, it's you'll be able to retire. I hope so. You might even retire before it comes out. I hope so. Make me an offer I can't refuse. How much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like everything back I paid you for my physical examination. Oh, I don't have that much. Money. Okay, that's another story. Gosh, time flies when you're having fun, don't it? You know, we've got to show you a couple of things, folks. Um, 
Doc, I want to thank you for being part of my show well, again. Thank We're going to uh, please show your book up to the uh, camera here. Thanks. I'm oh, still yeah. Here. Second to win. Now available through Amazon.com. Fabulously funny book. you got to have it. And if you're not bursting in laughter watching yes, it, yes. Dennis will give you your money back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What a guy, Doc. Thanks a lot for that money-back offer. All right. On that high note, I think <clears throat> we're going to come right back with an, another guest here shortly. But before we do that, a lady named Annette Flint was supposed to be my guest this evening, but she could not make it due to traffic problems in Atlanta, which I quite understand. So I'd like to run a little clip of her. She's a fabulous comedian, and I hope to have her on my show next month. So, folks, bear with me. Take a look at this little minute-and-a-half funny clip, and I think you'll enjoy it. You guys back there in the corner can see me all right. Yeah. yeah. It all about, I, I got a clear shot. I'm, I'm coming at you. Before I get started, though, I need to know, is there anybody here from Arkansas? <laughs> oh, don't say it if you are. Thank God, I'm going to tell you. I was there recently, and I don't have anything against those people from that fine state. But I was appalled by something I saw. I was walking through the parking lot at Walmart. And I heard something and I look over and there's a car. Had all the windows down. About four youngins in there and they're fighting and screaming. Mama! Mama! What in the... And honey, I looked, they weren't screaming for Mama. Who was on the inside of Walmart? No, they're screaming at Mama because she was sitting right there on the hood of the car, smoking a cigarette, nursing a baby. My like, good, get only in Arkansas. And I thought, but you know what? I was a little bit proud of her, had a new respect because that woman was not on the inside smoking that cigarette, you know, around all those babies. Going to smile at her a little bit. And before I could even do anything, she said, what's the matter with you? I don't know what to say, I just said, uh, nothing, it's just that a good old southern lady would just never nurse her baby in public. Ain't nobody said I was a southern lady, and besides that, I ain't never let the other ones eat in the car, and I ain't about to start with this one. <laughs> Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching that little clip. I think you're going to be uh, very pleased when that lady joins me next month, hopefully, on our show, second Tuesday of every month. But right now, this lovely person sitting next to me in uh, mind, body, and spirit is Miss Linda Warren. Linda, welcome to my show. Thank you. Very nice to have you here tonight. Now, uh, I kind of got a little bit of information before the show. I understand that you've been do dealing uh, in spiritual healing, physical healing, for at least 18 years, right? Correct. Okay, how did you discover this gift and when did you discover this gift? Actually, I was in a car accident. Wow. And modern medicine, Western medicine said I would have to live with the chronic pain. So I started seeking out alternative modalities, massage, energy healing, Reiki, acupuncture, and I got so fascinated with it that I started going to school. And when I would go into classes, the teacher would say, Linda, you can't be doing that. I'd say, what? Doing what? I would already be doing advanced work. It was like it came natural. Hmm. So it blossomed from there, and I've studied all that I could study and continue to work with it, and it just comes. Well, where, where, where do you go as far as a school to learn more about that particular art, I guess? Well, it's, it's like a calling. You get a nudge that you want to learn how to cook. Yeah. If you have a passion for cooking, you seek out which schools you want to learn French, you want to learn, you know, mm -hmm. Spanish food, whatever. And so I would look for healing and I would take from the people that worked on me and ask them, where did you go to school? Oh, and okay. then I would work with that modality that they were doing actually on me. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed that you mentioned to me that you did self-healing. Right. Which is harder, to do self-healing or to work with another person and, and heal them it's easy for me it is okay because i have a gift of seeing and knowing uh -huh. where the blocks are healing is just blocked energy whether it's physical mental emotional and my work helps move that blocked energy mm -hmm. and then the person's own self heals heals their body 
Okay. So you kind of guide them and then they take it up the rest of the way and you come to a good conclusion, basically. Somewhat. Right? That's kind of the process? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and I, let's see, you've been doing this for 18 years. You're a hands-on healer as well as a spiritual healer. And do you have any cases in particular that you've worked on that have start, kind of stood out in your mind over uh, the last 18 years? Yes, I had a lady in Mexico, I was doing healing down there, and she had ovarian cancer, and I worked on her and I could see that she had had some hard uh, early years and some trauma, and I cleared the memory of the trauma, and I got a uh, report later on that she was completely healed of the cancer. Wow. And then I had another fella, he had prostate cancer, and he was going through a divorce, and it went back to emotionally him uh, getting married when he was 19, and the trauma of being separated from that, that love of his life. All these sound like such simple things, mm -hmm. but emotional, mental or physical traumas can shut down the energy in the body. Yeah, I, I can see that. Mm -hmm. you, you got a very uh, interesting book you handed me earlier called Standing on All Four. Um, and this is a book that, well, says Transforming Cancer to Can-er. What does that mean? That is basically, canner is another way of saying taking cancer and making a, be a winner with it. Mm -hmm. Take control back of where you've let yourself be compromised. Take control back with nutrition and the way you take care of your body. Enjoying life, being happy, and then utilizing your own mind power to see yourself healed. How much does laughter add to a person's life? Span. Oh. They've done studies on that. I would say it probably adds 10 to 15 years. Because I laugh they, all the time. It's, it's contagious. I love it. It is. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a magician, but I do comedy magic, and 90% of the business that I do is in senior communities. And they love to laugh. And, you know, I love to interact with them. And they're just a fun group to work with. So um, I had a minister tell me when I did a church show one time, he says, you've got a ministry in laughter. And that stuck with me. If I can bring laughter to a group of people, I think I've done something worthwhile. You have. You know, because I'm not a spiritual healer, but if laughter is the best medicine, I don't have to be. I can heal them in another way. You are. You are definitely healing them. Yeah, definitely. And that's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. Yes. Um, well, is this your first book? It is. Okay. And yes. uh, without getting into uh, everything that's in this book, it looks very interesting. Uh, how can people go ahead and find this book? Is it available on Amazon or other places? It is available places? on Amazon, and it is um, listed standing on all four, Transforming Cancer to Canner, and Linda A. Warren. It's a great tool whether you have cancer or you have a family member that has cancer because it has healing modalities in it. It has reference to other uh, items that you can use in the alternative world. So. It's a great book to hand out and mm -hmm. give as a gift as well. Okay. Now, there's another name on here which I cannot pronounce. Your name is here on the bottom. Is there a co-author? Co-author is Farron Gossetica Poor. She is a pharmacist by trade in New York. Okay. And her part of the story is she survived cancer. Okay. And she went through all of the training and understood also the holistic part. Mm -hmm. And we were... She was one of my clients in New York, and she asked me, one day we were talking, and I said, we should teach a class, and I said, we should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> so That's kind of similar to what uh, Doc Schulman and his co-author did with uh, Second Wind. They met at a, uh, a place they were both uh, appearing at to make speeches, I think, uh, uh, to talk about a subject on stage, and then they hit it off, and they started comparing notes and said, we need to write a book about how funny seniors are. And uh, it, it, that, that was the result. So it's a very funny book and lots of fun. But uh, it's interesting how other people's lives cross our paths, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Um, we're doing great on time, so i got to ask you, and I asked you off camera, being that you're a spiritual person, and I have a personal interest in this, um, as I'm sure a lot of other people do, uh, you do believe that there are past lives that we've had as well as future lives? I do. Okay. And when I do healing on someone, oftentimes if they have chronic pain, I can see a past life injury. Really? And it's like 
if you clear that energy out of their energy field, the chronic pain will disappear. Mm. And they don't believe it, but I've, I've witnessed it over and over in healing sessions. Well, how many times do we come back? <laughs> and there's what? <laughs> science and has why? Not, science has not been able to measure that, so we, we take a guess until we can prove it. I'd love to find out what I was if there was a past life, but then on the other side of the coin, I'm thinking I had four legs. <laughs> and I don't want to know. <laughs> you know? Uh, but maybe we keep coming back because we don't get it right the first time or the second time or the third time. Who knows? I, th I feel like that's part of it. Yeah. And it's interesting because sometimes people do uh, feel like they meet people and they've known them all their lives just in that one meeting. Deja vu. Deja vu. All over again. And some, some of the <laughs> thought process is that those people have been together in previous lifetimes. That's interesting. Well, um, I'm having more fun at this point in my life than I ever had. And I, I'm <clears throat> older than you. And you're a very young person. <laughs> But that's another story. But I, I, I don't know, the last 10 years from in my life have been challenging and fun and uh, they've opened up a world of opportunities and other people that I uh, had no clue that I would meet as time went on, you know. So uh, if this would have happened uh, 35, 40 years ago, maybe monetarily I'd be a lot better off. But hey, enjoy what you got while you can, right? Isn't it as we get older, we yeah. get wiser? That's very true. That's very true. Somebody said one time we should start as old people and regress. Wow. Huh? How about that concept? <laughs> <laughs> we get physically better as we get, you know, younger, starting at 90 and working your way backwards. Then we'd never leave. You're right. <laughs> Boy, we're getting into some deep stuff here, folks. <laughs> if you're on drugs tonight, you are you know exactly where we're coming from. <laughs> Oh, it's fascinating, isn't it? Don't let's you? let's go to a commercial while I gather my thoughts. All right? <laughs> Don't miss me. The Brickyard, come visit the Brickyard, Best Food in Green Cove Springs at 414 Walnut Street, Green Cove Springs, Florida. Give them a call 904-228-3371 at 414 Walnut Street, Green Cove Springs, Florida. 904-228-3371. I had to get that in, folks. Just in case you're around Green Cove Springs or the Jacksonville, Florida area this Friday night, I'll be doing a fabulous magic and comedy show down there and uh, eating some free barbecue. And I really am looking forward to doing that. I'm also doing a Navy ship reunion Sunday night in Jacksonville. So it's going to be a busy weekend coming up for me. Linda, back to you. Where did we leave off? What life were we in when we last discussed this? <laughs> the present, I think. <laughs> well, if anybody wants to, you know, contact you to get a, a, a spiritual discussion going or whatever you can do to help that person, how can they go about doing that? They can go to my website, www.lindaawarren.com, and there's a detailed list of my training and how to contact me. Okay, very good. Um, also, do you teach this uh, skill, or does somebody have to be basically born with it? Is it a te teach teachable it. skill? Absolutely. We all have the okay. gift of inner healing, inner knowing, people call it instinct, some people call it uh, clairvoyance. Language is all the same when it comes to the human spirit. We all have a connection. You remember a, a very famous book from years ago called Power of Positive Thinking? Love it. Does that have something to do with this? Is that the same concept, positive thinking and can go a long way in healing oneself? Exactly. It can. The mind energy follows thought. So ah, whatever you're good thinking point. Yeah. is what is going to manifest. I know a very uh, depressed individual mm -hmm. that has a lot of pain, physical. And, you know, I just, uh, I don't know what advice to give that person to get out of that funk. Sometimes depression is energetic where they've shut down because they can't handle life pressure. Other times it's deficiencies, D3 deficiency, vitamins or they may have a crossover of medications. It's a multitude of things. Oh, okay. So each, with my gift, I can 
scan. It's like, it's weird. It's like an x-ray machine. No kidding. And it's like, I, I know, instinct, in, you know, intuitively. Well, the doc took my pulse. Would you scan me and see if I'm okay? <laughs> <laughs> if he starts levitating, I'm getting we're, a free we're scan. Wait a minute. <laughs> here I go. <laughs> okay, yeah, wait till I get the bill. Now I got a doctor bill and a spiritual healer bill. Oh my gosh. Wow. This night has gone much too fast. We're going to have to do this again. Linda, would you come back and be my guest again sometime? I would be honored. Yeah, I think uh, I find this a very fascinating subject. You're a fascinating person, and that's Thank what makes you. our show successful. We have good, fascinating, interesting people. It's a fun place. It is. I appreciate you having me. It is. Me. Thank you, dear, very much. Thank you. Folks, I guess we're going to uh, take a little cut here for about the next four weeks and uh, see you right back here the second Tuesday of June. Check your calendars for what date that is right here at 7.15 p.m. And be sure to uh, go to the Moonshadow, Moonshadow Tavern if and when you're ever in the Atlanta, Georgia area located in Tucker, Georgia. You'll have a great time and a great meal. Thanks for joining us. Al, that's a wrap. All right, well.